Hi, I'm Chris, and for those of you who've been following my video blog, I'm going to talk a little bit today about my recent search process. So I'm a theater professor, and I've been going on a lot of different interviews at various colleges and universities, but I want to talk about one particular experience that I had with the university that shall remain nameless. But basically, it was a very good example of how not to run an effective search process, as it was completely terrible. Let's talk about the Skype interview. During the Skype interview, the Dean of the School of Performing Arts was visibly yawning, clearly not interested in anything I had to say. And it wasn't until they asked me about the university's mission statement that she actually perked up. Now, their mission statement was comprised of three different components, being student-centered, having an excellence in teaching, and a Christian belief system. Not wanting to get into a discussion about my personal beliefs, I addressed the first two pieces, being student-centered and having an excellence in teaching. Well, of course, not hearing anything about my beliefs, she perked up and began grilling me, asking me about how my beliefs impacted my teaching. Wanting to stay true to my basic beliefs, I told her that I did believe in diversity in the classroom. After that interview, I was sure I wasn't getting an on-campus visit because I wasn't Christian enough. You can imagine my surprise when I got called and offered an interview on campus with this university. Of course, I accepted. Uh, and at that time, they told me that I was going to have, you know, a full day and a half with the search committee and that my interview would be comprised of at least two presentations. One would be a job talk and the other would be a teaching demo. We were a month out from my visit. You know, I asked at that time if I could get more information about the audience, the content that they were looking for, the length of time for the presentations, and they said they would get that information to me as soon as they could. So I waited. Three weeks before my on-campus visit, we were finalizing the flight details, and I asked again if they had any more information. I was assured that I would get that information ASAP. Another week went by. Two weeks before my campus visit, I politely contacted them and asked them if they had any more information about the two presentations that I was supposed to do and my on-campus interview schedule. Again, I was told to wait. One week before my interview, I sent two emails, again trying to seek out any information that I could get, and they went completely unanswered. 72 hours before my flight, I got information that my itinerary had changed, that I was no longer getting a day and a half with the search committee, but that my interview total time was going to be half a day with the search committee, clearly less than other candidates. And the two presentations that I was supposed to do, the job talk and the teaching demo, had been shortened down to a 30 minute teaching demo. So all the work that I had done on the job talk already in some preparation was completely futile and I had only 72 hours to prepare for teaching a class. In the midst of all of this, I never really knew with whom I was communicating in the department. So the department head and the search committee chair were basically the same person. And I got some communication from him, but I wasn't always sure who I was emailing with. And at one point, most of my communication ended up being with this woman. This woman, I later found out, was the department head and search committee chair's girlfriend. She wasn't employed at the university. She wasn't a member of the search committee. She had no affiliation. She was just his girlfriend helping out with the process. This is the woman that cut my interview day down from a day and a half to half a day, was given the authority to do this, and wasn't even connected in any way, shape, or form with the university or the search process. How unprofessional is that? The on-campus visit. So it begins with breakfast in the morning with the search committee and the dean. Well, the department head slash search committee chair is late. So we begin the interview process and then he comes in and disrupts it as though we haven't even begun walks by me, goes to the other end of the table and begins having a, a personal conversation with the other search committee members. I'm standing there not sure if I should introduce myself, what I should do in this situation. So finally he sits down, we reconvene the interview, 
And then he stands up a few minutes later and says, oh, I have to go. I forgot I have a class I have to teach. This was the first interview of the morning. The next time I see the department head slash search committee chair, he takes me on a tour of the theater building. During the entire tour, all he does is talk about himself, his accomplishments, his tenure at the university. He doesn't ask me one question about myself, about my work, about my interests, and he doesn't tell me anything about what I would be doing if I were to be offered the position. After the tour, then I have a student interview, which actually goes very well. But the interesting thing is there are no search committee members present, just students, and the only non-student in the room is the girlfriend. Well, she's curious to meet me, and so she decides she'll sit in. After the student interview, the department head and the girlfriend take me to the department office. And this is ostensibly on the way to my teaching demo, which is less than 30 minutes away. I'm hoping that I can get there in time to set up all my materials and make sure that I'm prepared before I actually have to do my teaching demo. Well, we go to the department head's office, and he ends up getting caught up in business, personal business. I, I don't even know what. He basically sits at his computer with his back to me the entire time. Students come in. He doesn't introduce me to them. I might as well not even be there. Until finally, he realizes that we're late for my teaching demo. We rush to the classroom. He fiddles around with the computer. Obviously, I would have had time to get everything prepared if we'd gotten there in time. But luckily, I have experience and expertise in this arena. I'm able to get things squared away. I do the teaching demo and get really positive feedback from the students and the other teachers in the room. I hear nothing, no feedback at all from the department head. After my teaching demo, we realize that we're late for lunch. So he rushes me across campus. But of course, who should join us on our walk across campus but the girlfriend? Well, they talk to each other and engage. I walk a few feet behind them, as, again, as though I don't even exist. Once we get to lunch, though, she excuses herself because she feels like it would be unprofessional for her to join us. <laughs> uh. At lunch, which is probably the most awkward 30 minutes of the entire on-campus interview, I find out from the department head that he's always been the department head, that he basically has built the department on his own without any supervision, and that he's basically hand-picked and personally recruited all of the other faculty in the department. Hmm. At this point, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't take a position even if offered one. The last meeting of the day is with the dean. And so, of course, I get grilled again about whether or not I would be a good fit or not with their Christian beliefs. Halfway through that meeting, one of the search committee members interrupts us and tells us that I'm going to be late for my flight, so I don't even get a chance to talk about myself or my work with the dean. Again, at this point, I've already decided there's no way I would accept a position with this university if they offered. The aftermath of this horrible search process is it's been three months and I still haven't been informed of whether or not I've been hired. Not that it matters, I've already accepted a position elsewhere. And I also have a hotel charge that randomly showed up on my credit card, which to their credit they did take care of rather quickly. But all these other incidental kind of petty charges like, you know, airport parking and everything like that, I've contacted them three times, and they've told me that it's in process, but nothing's really getting done. I'm supposedly going to have to talk to the dean next. Well, I'm pretty much sure I'm not going to be getting any money from them. Overall, I would say this has been one of the worst job search experiences I've ever had. And at the same time, probably one of the most valuable learning lessons.